Hello, hello, and welcome to this strength training class today. It's going to be a little bit different than most of the classes we have on our channel, which is usually a vinyasa style sequence. But today is going to be integrating a lot of the high intensity interval movements that we have in our pulse program. And I'll be taking those movements and kind of guiding you through 20 to 30 minutes of some really hard work. You don't need anything today except for your mat, your body, and your breath. And if you'd like to put on some motivating music, you can head to our Spotify channel. We have a playlist, which I will link below, which is called Feel the Pulse. And today you are absolutely gonna feel your pulse. We'll be focusing mostly on our core and our back, but like every class that we teach, there's still some integration of other body parts. So don't be surprised when we do some chaturanga holds or some leg kicks or whatever it is we're doing. Uh, don't be annoyed that it's not only core and only back. We're still gonna be making it a full body sequence and a full practice, but we'll just be focusing mostly on core and back. We'll begin in half Shavasana on our back. So join me there, legs bent, soles of the feet on the ground, the knees either apart or together. Place one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart, and close the eyes. If you're already wondering what we're doing, relaxing at the beginning of a strength training class, it's really important to actually ground down before you begin a movement practice to just take a few deep breaths, take a minute or two to really center yourself, to allow the body to slow down, to allow the thoughts to slow down, to really bring yourself into the present moment, into this space, so that throughout the class you can still continue to connect to that stillness within. So even though we're going to be getting the heart rate up, we'll be moving a lot, doing some really challenging poses and transitions and holds, you can still connect to each breath one at a time. So you're still moving from that mindful space and presence. Take a couple more deep breaths here. Blink open the eyes. Bring the legs together and bring both legs over to the right side. Come into a supine twist on the right. Both legs rest down. Right hand on the outer left thigh and you can extend your left arm out to the side. Take some deep breaths here. And just let gravity do the work. As you come into this spinal twist Bring the legs up through center and over to the left. And again, settle right into the pose. Don't waste any time. Drop in, connect with the breath, arrive. Legs come back up to center. And then extend both arms out to your side. Keep the legs at 90 degrees. And then the knees are gonna stay either at the hip distance or even farther down. But we're just gonna start to lower the legs over to the right. Let them hover above the ground. And then before your left shoulder lifts off, 
So keep both shoulders pressing down onto the ground and then bring the legs up through center and over to the left. Back over to the right, over to the left. Let's do two more each side. Already starting to wake up our core, get some movement in the spine. Last one to the left, back up to center. Hold on to the backs of the hamstrings, start to rock forward and back. We'll meet in boat pose. Shins are parallel to the ground. Bring the fingertips together and then start to pull your chest closer to your quads at the same time retract your shoulder blades on your back. Now you're going to extend your right leg straight out towards the ground and at the same time you're going to reach your right elbow to the left knee. Switch, switch, switch. Great, we'll go for about 30 seconds here. So you're keeping the chest lifted. Starting to find some rhythm in your breath. Okay, last three, two, one. We end with the left elbow on the right knee. Keep the legs lifted, come back to boat. Bring the hands down at your sides. A little bit behind the hips, the fingertips are pointing to the front of your mat. And then you could either keep the legs bent as they are, or you can choose to straighten the legs and start to make a circle over to the right, down towards the ground, and then back up. Continue with those circles. We'll do 10 in this direction. Nine, 10, back up to the top, switch directions over to the left. Last two, and last one. Great job. Hug the knees into the chest, come onto your back. Give yourself a little squeeze, just a couple seconds here. And then bring the hands down at your sides. Start to lift the legs up. You can keep the legs bent or you can straighten the legs if you like. And then start to lift the hips up off the ground and lower them back down. Lift, lower. Lift, lower. Keep it up. So you've got about 30 seconds here. And instead of using momentum to try to swing with the legs and lift the hips, focus more on engaging your lower core, your lower abdominals near your pelvis. Last three, two, and one. Now keep the legs lifted, and then just walk your hands underneath your hips so you can almost rest your hips a little bit onto your forearms. And then straighten the legs, and then start to scissor the legs, and then lower the legs down towards the ground. Bring the legs back up, continue with that scissor motion until they're straight up to the sky, and then again, lower down. Lift it up. Let's go for seven more. The core is nice and strong, super engaged.
two more. Continue to keep the lips sealed, breathe through the nose. Slow, deep, controlled breaths. Last one. Bring it up. Keep the legs straight, feet together. Lower the feet down towards the ground. You're gonna let your legs hover just a few inches above the ground. Point the toes, engage the core, tuck the tailbone under. We're here for 30 seconds. Continue to slow down the breath. Last four, three, two, one. Hug the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Rock left and right. Both soles of the feet come back down onto the ground. Feet are hip distance apart. Press the hips up for bridge pose. A little bit of relief in the hip flexors, the core. Begin to engage the muscles in your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, by pulling your heels up closer to your shoulders. You really activate the whole back line. Keep your left foot down on the ground and the right foot reaches straight up to the sky. Start to lower the hips down, let them hover above the ground and then draw, push with the left heel, hips lift back up, lower down, lift it up. Last five, four, three, two, one, keep the hips lifted, switch the feet. Right foot down, left leg to the sky. And lower the hips down, let them hover, press it up. Let's do 10 on this side. Really focus on driving the right heel into the ground. Pull it towards the shoulders. You're really working that right glute. Last three, two, and one. Both feet back down onto the mat. Hold here, 30 seconds in bridge. Keep a little bit of space between your chin and your sternum so you're not putting strain on your cervical spine, your neck. Keep the hips lifted. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Release the hips down towards the ground. Windshield wiper the knees one at a time. Start to rock forward and back, and you'll make your way into a tabletop. Now start to press into the hands, press, press the fingertips and grip the mat. Start to lift the knees up. You're gonna stay light on the toes. And let's start by turning over to the right. So you're gonna pivot on the right foot and you're gonna kick your left leg under. And the right hand comes up close to the right shoulder. Keep that left leg super straight and push the ground away with your left arm. Switch sides, step it down, kick it through. Move faster. We're here for one minute. So you're nice and light on the toes. Finding that rhythm in your breath. Seeing if you can keep your lips sealed the entire time. 
Just breathe through the nose. You're almost there. Last 10 seconds. Keep it up. Move a little bit faster. Last three, two, one. End by kicking your right leg through and back to a tabletop. Great job. Start to walk the feet forward and then sit down on the heels. You're going to bring your hands uh, close to the tops of your knees so that your fingertips are basically the same uh, distance or they line up with your knees. Now you'll stay on the tops of your feet and you're going to start to push the ground away, lift the knees up, pull them into the chest, and then spread the knees outside of the arms and set the knees back down. Press it up, bring the knees to the inside, and back out. So continue on your own. Now, if you can't get your knees to go around the arms, then just do your best. You can also just continue to lift and lower the knees into the chest. Great, let's go for five more. Last one. Great job. Now tuck the toes under and then start to sit onto the heels. And we're gonna do a forearm exercise, but I would actually like you to stay on your toes the entire time. So now you can either keep your feet here, just sit on the heels um, and start with the arm exercise, or you can also lift the knees up Maybe challenge your balance here at the same time. So your choice, whatever option, if you want to also set the heels down or do it in a squat or feet out or in, or if you're even doing it like this, it's all good. Whatever feels good on the feet. I would just like to encourage you to stretch the toes in the other direction too. So come into whatever variation with the feet you would like and then uh, spread the arms or spread the fingertips Keep the arms straight. You can rest them on your knees if you'd like. And then start to make a fist with the hand and then extend the fingers. Fist, extend, fist, extend, fist, extend. Now move a lot faster. In fact, look at how quickly my hands are moving and try to move faster than mine. Go for just 30 seconds here. I say just. I know this is very challenging. Just keep it up. Come back to the breath. Just like when you're off your mat and in the world and things get challenging and things get stressful or there's lots of pressure, you always have the breath to bring you back to the present, bring you back to the now. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Gently release. Great job. Place the hands, step into a high plank. So tuck the tailbone under, push the ground away. To find some relief in the hip flexors after those squats and lalasana lifts, we're just going to do some hip dips gently up and down. So lower the hips down. Keep the core and the glutes engaged. Press it up. Plank. Lower. Lift. Lower. Lift. We're going to do about 20 of these. If this is too much on your back or your hips, you can always set the knees down and continue. Continue. 
Last three, two, and one. Lift the hips, downward dog. Bend one leg at a time. We're here for about five breaths. So make it good. Press onto the inside part of the hands. Take the weight off the outside cartilage of the wrist. Shift forward to high plank. And now from high plank, we're gonna lower all the way onto our belly, but we're gonna lower down for a full 30 seconds. So take your sweet time and do not beat me to the floor, okay? So you could either keep the knees up or lower them down, but start to lower, bend the arms. And you're gonna make your way there through Chaturanga. So you might even start to shift forward high on the toes. Really resist gravity as much as you can. You've got still five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful belly comes all the way down. Come onto the tops of the feet and then come onto the fingertips. You spider the hands and start to lift the chest for cobra. Gently press into the hands. Big inhale and exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, lift and lower. We'll do about 10 of these. We're beginning to activate everything down the posterior line, the back line, the spine. So really as you come up, engage all the muscles in the back. Last two, last one. Great job, lower the chest back down and then extend the arms out to the side for half locust with T arms. So you're gonna keep your arms out to the sides, your thumbs point up towards the ceiling and then start to lift the chest up and then the arms lift up as well. So keep the arms straight. We're gonna hold here for one minute. So do not let your hands come lower than your shoulders. Continue to bring the shoulder blades together. Lift the chest up even higher. Engage the quads to help press the tops of the feet into the mat. You're already halfway there. Come back to the breath. Only 10 seconds to go. Keep it lifted, you can do it. Keep the chest lifted. Start to bend the legs, reach back with the hands and hold onto the ankles. Flex both of your feet. Then we're gonna do some floor bow lifts. So with sort of the help of your legs, you're just gonna have your arms holding onto your ankles and then start to push the feet away from the glutes and at the same time you lift the chest. Lower back down, lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, lower. We'll do about 20 of these. So this can be a lot on the spine. You're activating so many muscles at the same time. So it's really important to be aware of what's going on in the back. You should always avoid any sensations of pain or sharpness or tingling. You're just looking for that good, sweet burn sensation. Five, four, three, two, and one, release the legs back down to the ground. Again, keep the chest lifted. Reach both arms up over your head. 
and then start to cactus the arms down at your sides. Make two fists and draw the shoulder blades down the back. Keep the chest lifted the entire time. Reach the arms forward again, straight out in front of you, and then cactus the arms. Make the fists, draw the shoulder blades down. Reach it forward and cactus the arms. Forward and cactus, 10 more. Keep the chest lifted. Last two, last one, beautiful. Bring the hands underneath the forehead, relax the head down. Shake the hips left and right. You can also bend the knees on the windshield wiper the legs. Release the legs back down onto the ground. Now you're going to interlace the hands, bring them behind your head, and then lift the elbows up, and then lift the chest up. So now we're going to hold here 30 seconds. So keep the elbows as high as the ears, or even higher. Continue to lift, almost as if the mat below you is hot lava. Try not to touch your forehead down on the ground. Keep it lifted. You can do it. Last 10 seconds. And release gently. Again, shake out the hips. And come on to the forearms and lift the hips for a forearm plank. Tuck the tailbone under. So the hips are almost as high as the shoulders. Now you're gonna send the hips off to the right, let the hips lower down. You'll come onto the knife edge of both feet and then back through center and over to the left. Over to the right and over to the left. So you're almost making uh, like the letter C with your hips. You're drawing that letter up and over. Keep the tailbone tucked under. Last five, four, three, two, and one, back to center. Now you're gonna dip the hips up and down, just a few inches. So lower the hips down, and then lift the hips up. Lower, lift, lower, lift. 10 more. Last one, back to forearm plank. Now you can either hold here, you can also set the knees down, or you can follow along for some knee taps to the triceps. So start with your right leg, tap, right knee to tricep, bring it back, left leg, and back. Four, three, two, last one. Great job, now hold. Forearm plank, we're here for two minutes. So tuck the tailbone under, engage with the core. You can bring the hands together if you need to. Put all of your attention on the breath. You can always set the knees down if you need to. 
but really only do it when you really, really, really need to. The world's record for the longest plank is over eight hours. So even though this is challenging, I think we can do two minutes. a lot of willpower, a lot of focus. So stick with the breath. You can do it. Last 30 seconds. And as you can see, I'm shaking all over the place. It's OK. You got it. Shake with me. Keep it up. Last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Set down the knees, set down the hips, come into Sphinx pose. Engage the glutes. Feel that stretch in the core. Beautiful job. I'm so proud of you. It's tough for me too, I promise. But it's good. It's good to explore your edge. Oftentimes you can be surprised at how far you can go, how much willpower you have. And maybe this class was way too hard or you weren't able to do many of the poses or transitions or hold as long. That's also perfectly fine. Great job for making it this far in the video, for doing your best. And the wonderful thing about this strength training that we do here on our channel is that it gets easier over time. The more you do it, the more you push yourself, the easier the movements become the stronger your muscles get, the more focused your attention becomes, and the more present you are. So if today was tough for you, then try it again in a couple days. Over time, you'll notice some big changes. Beautiful, release the chest down to the mat. Now you're gonna Reach and extend your left arm underneath your body to come all the way across your mat. And then you could either keep your palm facing down towards the ground or you can turn it up towards the sky. But what we're doing here, what we're stretching is uh, our left shoulder mostly, our deltoid muscle. So see if you can, instead of coming into a, a twist and really trying to get your shoulder down to the ground, instead try to keep both of your shoulders and your back sort of parallel to the ground, and then you're using the weight of your body to come down onto the arm. So now once the left arm is there, you can bring your right hand underneath your forehead. Maybe you can rest your forehead down on your hand. If you can't, maybe you're up on your forearm. It's also okay. In yin yoga, we call this bow tie. So we usually do it with both arms crossing underneath the chest and then you hold it for two to five minutes. So we won't be holding it as long. Maybe just 10 more seconds here. So really see if you can consciously relax into the stretch. Now bring your right palm back down uh, below your left arm, and then start to bend your right knee. Make your way onto your back for a supine twist to the left. So you're gonna come all the way onto your back. 
Extend your right arm out to your side. And then bring your left hand to the outside of your right thigh. So same pose that we did at the very beginning of class, actually the first pose after that half shavasana, except this time we have the left leg straight. So don't worry so much if you can't touch your knee, your right knee and your right shoulder down onto the ground at the same time. It's really not important. As long as you feel this twist in the mid back, then it's all good. We're here for just about five more breaths. So with every exhale, see if you can really, really relax. Melts just a little bit more into the mat. If there's any tension you're still holding on to, then release it. Great. Come back onto your belly. Both legs are straight. And then we'll switch with that bow tie with the right arm. So bring your right arm underneath your chest. Left hand underneath the forehead. Or any variation that feels good for you. Now we're on our last two poses of today's class. This one and the supine twist. And then of course, Shavasana. So now that you know there's just a couple minutes left of class, I'd like you to pay even more attention to your breath. Try to add one more second to each inhale. One more second to each exhale and really mindfully slow down the breath. Invite your body back into its parasympathetic nervous system so you can get out of your fight or flight mode. Keep the right arm where it's at, bring the left palm Underneath the right arm, start to bend the left leg, keep the right leg straight, and come onto your back. Extend your left arm out to your side. And the right hand comes to the outer left thigh. Maybe even close the eyes. And release any tension that you're still holding on to. Find those areas of resistance. And give yourself permission to relax. And now stay on your back, lift both legs back up. Windshield wiper the knees. Then hug both knees into the chest, give yourself a big squeeze. Take a big inhale, fill the lungs all the way up to the top. Hold the breath at the top. Squeeze everything in. 
Exhale, open mouth, release the breath. <sighs> release the legs, come into Shavasana. We're only gonna be in Shavasana for one minute today. So I know that this was a strength training class, so you just wanna get it, sweat, go and run and be done. But this stage, this pose is actually really important. So I know you just gave me already a lot of your time, but I just ask for one more minute. Drop in with me into this Shavasana. Put all of your attention on your breath and allow your body to just melt into the ground. I'll let you know when it's time to come out. I'll guide you out and close out the class together. Take a deep breath, fill up the lungs, and exhale, open mouth, release. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Reach your arms up over your head. Point the feet, bring your feet together. One last stretch of class. Then bend the legs and roll onto one side. Gently press yourself back up to a comfortable seat. Bring the palms together, the hands at the heart. And take a moment to recognize your fierce amount of willpower that you have, that you possess, and that is always within you. when things get hard, when the pressure is on, when you feel a lot of stress. If you take nothing else away from this class, please take away the message that you are always with the breath. The breath is always connected to you. And you can always use it as your anchor to come back to the present moment, to come back to that, that feeling, that sensation of utter stillness within. Thank you so much for joining me today for this practice, for being here, for sharing your space, your energy, and your sweat. Lots of love. I'll see you on the mat again tomorrow. Namaste.